You're watching KLTX, Channel 15, serving the city of Lufkin. So, the one thing I really loved about this was... Just one? Well, the, my top thing, okay. I think, about this. Top thing. Was the fact that they put a great cast together. Yes, they did. Uh, Kevin Costner, Woody Harrelson, Kathy Bates, like... And they just... It reminds me of the old, like, almost like black and white films. Because they got these great actors, they gave them a really nice, you know, backdrop to sit in. And they just kind of let them do their thing. Mm -hmm. Like... Woody Harrelson be Woody Harrelson, Kevin Costner be, you know, Kevin Costner, let like Kathy Bates do her thing. And they all do it so well. And then you've got an interesting story that... Has, Pretty notor notorious? Yeah. Yeah. Has a lot of notoriety. Notorious? Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Um, I speak real good. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just, again, it's almost refreshing yeah. from the... The fast-paced play lamp, somebody's got to be saying something every, you know, half second, and we've got to have the cameras cutting, cutting an action, and blah, blah, blah. You mean the ADHD movies? Yeah, like that. that we put out now. And, they're, you know, there's a lot of them just riding in the car, and there's just kind of silence, and the car kind of comes by. Oh, they get so grumpy and old with each other. Yeah, I loved oh, it. it's so great. Just, no, you're not true. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Costner won't let Woody Nelson drive the car. Yeah. Oh, I love the Why did you turn around? You walk like an 85 year old man. <laughs> I wanted him just to like, I wanted a deleted scene where he gets out of the car, he's got the map and throws it, and he's got like mustard on his tie. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> that would have fit right in, actually. Yeah. Just, uh, and it was really, really neat because this, it's the story of Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. But it's not. It's right. the story of Frank Hamer, who is the person that's hunting down Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. And. It's a story everyone should know. <laughs> Which, if hopefully. you don't, Bonnie and Clyde were rather famous bank robbers and they killed a bunch of people. I don't know how many it was by the end. It was a lot of people. Yeah, they basically killed. killed and robbed everywhere they went. Which, at the time, the media had given them like this like hero persona and people Robin bought into Hood. it. So they became very famous. Yeah, like Robin Hood. And even though they pretty much just killed whoever got in their way, and or at least that's how they portrayed them in this movie, which. I don't know what's actually... I have not researched the history, but I, I knew they killed a bunch of people. <laughs> so. Well, and so the, at the time Bonnie and Clyde came out, they were romanticized, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. And, and they, they were, were romantically involved as well. Yeah, they were kind of like pop stars that, you yeah. know, or movie stars or whatever. And then, uh, you know, they put out movies and movies, and the movies always went along those lines. We yeah. follow Bonnie and Clyde, but we never really had one that follows mm -hmm. Frank Hamer, who's the guy trying to trying to hunt him down. That's Kevin Costner. Right. And it's really neat to watch the same thing from a the different opposite. perspective. Yeah. And I mean, really, if you think about it, they're not nice people. They're mm -hmm. killing and robbing and, you know, stealing and, and it just never, because it has been so romanticized, it's just always kind of, it's almost like a fantastical fantasy thing, right? Yeah. Like it's not real life, but it's like, it's real life. And plus their names just roll off the tongue so nicely. Bonnie and Clyde. Just, like Sonny and Cher. It just has a ring to it, you know? Although I don't think Sonny and Cher killed as many people. No. No. <laughs> Not quite. Not yet. Uh, but, and I'm sure they changed some things to make the sure. good guys better and the bad guys worse, you know, for filming. I, 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 have a, I have a specific example. Yeah. I, I don't want to quote, but I will talk about it later. It'll be a spoiler for that. Yeah. Which, gotcha. uh, uh, but at the same time, I like the fact that, the, like, Frank Hamer, or, well, Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson, like, their characters are not perfect oh, no. people. Like, they are they are killers. Like, mm -hmm. and that's the whole point of the movie is, like, the police are trying to catch them, the FBI is trying to catch them, and they're like, look, we can't catch him. He said he's not coming in alive. He's shooting his way out of everything. Yeah. We need a killer. So I'm like, go find me a killer, send the killer to go kill him. They refer to him as, as manhunters at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. yeah. And, and I... Which I didn't know about, and I'm assuming that it's all completely accurate, the Texas Rangers being disbanded yes, by that governor yes. and then reinstated by the next Not governor. Not necessarily <laughs> by that governor, ah. but there was some disbandment and gotcha. unwillingness to bring them back together. Apparently they had 
been doing some bad stuff too, and right, it's being unchecked and just yeah, you know, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I am the law. I am the law. Exactly. <laughs> slamming down. <laughs> Judge dreading it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one riot, one ranger. That's where that comes from. I'm sure. Yeah. No, no, actually, that's something different. But they, <laughs> the reason they got disbanded is because they were, uh, they they were taking the law into their own hands and not really, mm. yeah, not answering to, yeah, yeah. people like they should. Um, but. Okay, so I have a philosophy, and I'm extraordinary sure... Extraordinary times call for extraordinary pitches. Well, no. I mean, kind of, yeah. <laughs> but, and, and I have a feeling Harry may disagree with me on this. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, but... Where's my popcorn? <laughs> the, the world needs hard people. There are people that have to make hard decisions. There are people that have to do hard things. Sometimes there are people that have to be killed. Bonnie and Clyde, he said, and I fully believe that they meant it. I'm not coming in alive. If you're going to take me, you have to kill me. Mm-hmm. And no ma- no amount of politics or policy or whatever, we need somebody to go shoot this man mm-hmm. who can shoot him before he can shoot them. Because they were really good at it, too, apparently. Yeah. And... Man. We need somebody better, and I'm kind of worried about the world we live in right now because those hard men are fewer and farther in between, and if anything arises and we need... I mean, I don't know. Like, I grew up with my grandparents, and my grandfather fought in World War II, and he was a hard mm-hmm. man. Like, if if it needed done, it's going to get done. Yeah. And a lot of times, like, I try to... That's kind of ingrained in me, right? Right. But this may not be the nicest way to do it. This may not be the most politically correct way to do it. But it needs to be done. It needs to be done now. And this is going to have to happen. And I really felt in the movie that that's Frank Hamer. That's that hard man. Yeah. And he may not have been, you know, again, they make him out to be a perfectly okay guy, right? He may not have been. But he was the right man for the right job. Yeah. To come do this. And uh, and I, and that was one of the things I really liked because Woody Harrelson wasn't that man. Yeah. Like Woody Harrelson was his partner. And he needed backup. Yeah. But Frank Hammer was that man. Yeah. And like he had to go do it, and he needed help. But when Woody Harrelson kind of plays that right, he's just not that. So in the show, Hammer is very square, very stiff. Very old cut. Yeah. And he's <laughs> and, and and Woody Harrelson's like, you know, maybe if we didn't do it, so that you know and. Yeah. He's like, no, this is the way we do it. And that's probably why he lived, you know, as long as he did and didn't. Because well, And it's in the trailer, so. But there's that great scene where he's like, how many bullets you got in you? And he's like, uh, 16 or so, I think. <laughs> and he's like, I don't have any of me. He's like, I know, because I was your partner. <laughs> so I was covering. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, there's that. So yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not going to disagree with, oh, with any of yeah. that that you say. I'm going to add one oh, thing I thought you were onto it. But. Which is... That the movie does does highlight that point. There's a, there's a time and a place for certain kinds of people, but it also kind of gets a point across that that doesn't necessarily make them a hero that you should idolize. That mm. there were things about him that that he was not proud of that he had done. Murder or killing or self defense <laughs> doesn't make you a heroic figure how you handle that does and I thought that it was interesting you were talking about Woody Harrelson's character he's the only one that is willing to address and accept the past that had gone through Frank is silent Mm -hmm. he is mum on any sort of mention of it but when it comes to that conscious acknowledgement of what has been done and how to deal with the weight (laughs) back that's where Harrelson's character uh, his line showed up yeah and that's one of the reasons I really liked his character. He was, because again, like I, that's like that's not me. Like I know, like I'm not that. I can't do the stoic. Like I can't. Yeah. It's just not me. But I could kind of see more of me and Woody Harrelson. Like I want to be there. I want to help you. But I, you know, when it comes down to it, I may not be the one you need. But he was the one mm. that you needed. And at the same time, in order to do that, maybe you just. Maybe you don't have a conscience. Maybe you don't have whatever, you know. And, and I don't know if the stoicism was like the regret from past things or was the stoicism just part of his 
mm-hmm. you know, personality. And that's why he can do the things he can do. But then, like I said, you've got Woody Harrelson, who's he kind of tells the story to everybody, right? Yeah. They sit around the table, and Woody Harrelson's like, "Oh yeah, he's we did this and that and the other." Frank never says a, a word. He goes out and sits on the porch and you know yeah. watches the sunset or whatever. And everybody else gets wider and wider eyed as he's talking. <laughs> to like, I wish I hadn't asked about that. <laughs> I think it's kind of a, a point that people who are younger, probably the, the next generation, need to see in a movie because. We're, we've gotten enough years after there's been a, a large military involvement in other countries that mm-hmm. people may not be aware. And every now and then, I'm always shocked when I hear it, but you see someone who's like a late teenager or a middle teenager, it's like, oh yeah, tell us what you did over there. And it's like, no. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things well, that- we grew up with Vietnam veterans. You don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Where Frank's character, the way it's, pre- it's presented, you you understand how stupid that would be to be like oh tell us what happened in the valley and it's like no don't tell <laughs> me what happened just hey what what do you need are you okay it's good to see you well and these are not my like my original thoughts even though I'm going to claim them as my own but if you go back to there needs to be hard men yeah. yeah and they need to do hard things and I don't have to know about them. Yeah. Like, and I think 99% of the world does it. And that's the only reason 99% of the world gets to live the life they live and be happy. And I mean, if you start and my mother loves these like murder, you know, forensic files and all this. And she has pretty much watched herself into a state of paranoia and make sure the door is locked. I heard a noise. What's that? And I mean, if you really sit down and think about all the things that could kill us at, you know, any second, you would be just... Where you just kind of got to do the ostrich and stick your head in the sand and go, <laughs> ah, whatever. And the scariest thing on. to me about those shows is like 90% or more of them are killed by people they know. Yeah. yeah. So that's not good. <laughs> it's always that fat bearded guy. I don't know. Watching uh, no, you guys. I'm watching you guys. <laughs> uh, but I kind of love that. I love the pacing. Oh, it was I, wonderful. I didn't, at the start, I actually felt it. I'm like, man, this is kind of... It's kind of slow. It takes a while for things to develop. And, but then after, but it's, I think it's because we're just in the ADD, you know, wham, 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 yeah. wham, wham. And I was expecting that. And then after a while, it just becomes cinema, you know, yeah. and you're just kind of in it. And you I catch the stride and you just yeah. kind of, you're going with it. And it's good. I really thought the, uh, I really thought the little squirrely sheriff deputy guy was going to yeah. betray him. I, he I was thought, just too twitchy. I thought that was going to go sideways uh, also. I found it really endearing that he didn't know. Oh, yeah. I thought that that was that really kind of shows the um, the soul of the audience, and like mm-hmm. you know, we understand the hype about the you know Bonnie and Clyde news media story of lovers robbing banks, but you know we may identify with some of the emotions that's being portrayed, but that that's not they're not the heroes. <laughs> I. I, and it goes back to what I was saying before, but I really love the, the one saying they pull up to the gas station and Frank gets out and he asks the gas station attendant, <laughs> you see, you know, the, what was it, a, a, a Ford sedan, or sedan, sedan yeah. yeah. And the guy's like, I ain't seen nothing. Even if I had, I wouldn't tell you nothing. And so he beats the tar out of the guy. <laughs> and he's like, how about now? And then, the, I mean, he gets what he, he, he gets the information yeah. he needs. Like, sometimes you need that guy. And, uh, <laughs> And I I do like the fact, and again, uh, they don't, they didn't show Bonnie and Clyde's face until the end. Which was amazing. That That was such an amazing artistic choice. Because the story was not about them. It was about Mm -hmm. Frank. So like you couldn't glorify him because you couldn't see him. But every time you saw him, it was always either like neck down or it was in the car or far away or from the back. Like the Muppet babies. (laughs) Yes, not, not exactly the, like that. Not the reference I would have went with, but okay. Uh, but yeah, it like shows them. always behind the fence. Yeah. Uh, oh, Wilson. 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 <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, every time you see Bonnie and Clyde in this, they're doing something horrible. They're, mm-hmm. uh, and they're doing it in like horrible ways. Like, like the, Nanny on the Muppet Baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, it there's gets a, more clear every time. I, I, I get it. <laughs> there's that scene with the cops and like shoot the, the cops in the street and she walks over and yeah. just flips ah. him over and shoots him in the face. And then Frank makes a point to point out, you know, which I guess was exposition for the audience. But yeah. he's like, yeah, she didn't just shoot him while he's laying on the ground wounded. She flipped him over. Right. So that he could watch her, you mm-hmm. know, shoot him. Like these are not 
good people y'all are idolizing and yeah. making heroes out of. And, and he's like, they, uh, you know, they need killing and they need stopping and y'all need to help us instead of harboring them. I think one of the reasons why this movie right now is so important, I think it's the right movie for the right time, is because people need to stop with the whole generational wars. They need to stop saying, oh, the millennials now, they're so messed up. Like They'll, they'll post anything on, on social media with their tweet space and they'll look at the people they think are their heroes and they got no respect for the law and this, that, and the other. And it's like, no, go back to this time frame. It was the same thing. Like people were making heroes out of cop killers. Can you imagine if they'd had Facebook? Yeah. Oh my oh gosh. Lord. People were calling, <laughs> uh, you know, all the cops. I can't remember. It felt like they called them pigs at some point. Like there was just this negative opinion toward law enforcement, which, and it's, it's not new. But you know what? Since you say that, that was media driven. Yeah, just like it is now. Exactly. But it was, nothing's changed. Yeah, that's true. Because it was the newspapers then, and they were portraying them as heroes. I guess and the biggest the difference is that it was during the Great Depression, so there were a lot more. The poverty was a lot more rampant. No Although, difference. It's all started. Like if you go back and you look at when the whole uh, people's concerns, and housing crisis happened. Yeah, that's when it started. Because that's yeah. whenever the first instance that made national attention in Arizona happened with mm. the. Uh, police misconduct mm. and then it, it continued for the next five or six years yeah. see I, I would disagree very slightly like I don't think I actually fully disagree with what you just said but so if they're in the Great Depression and the paper is portraying them as bank robbers and the paper is portraying them as Robin Hoods right they're robbing these rich bankers that took y'all's houses and they're giving the money back to the people then they're being incorrectly portrayed as heroes and right. people are latching on to that where I think some of the stuff now people are not being portrayed as heroes they're like oh this dude just rode up and shot three cops for no reason and people are like yay and I'm yeah. like well no one which again they're being influenced because people are telling them to cheer that yeah. but there was at least a tiny bit of justification for their this is why we want you to believe this way or this is why you believe this way is because they're they're doing wrong to the people that would I guess it's the same because they're doing yeah. people are telling you oh well cops are evil they're doing horrible stuff to you so people are killing cops so yeah and they were back then they were like well the banks are doing horrible things to you and they're stopping the bank so the difference would be that uh, the, back then the, it would be a uh, counter cultural act that was actually had good bearing and now it's just two wrongs making it right yeah so does anyone know, were Bonnie and Clyde actually giving away the money they were stealing or were they just spending it on their own Not stuff? intentionally. <laughs> I think there may have been some instances where they used it as a getaway. Well, I... Like, keep so like, shut, keep I can shut, tell you what I have heard. Like, throw it and then just drop off. So uh, I have a problem. So I've watched the movie, I've watched the other movies, I have watched a documentary, I have mm -hmm. heard from my father who's like drove to Louisiana and gone to the museum and he's... Oh, like cool. yeah. followed the path and did all that and he brought me a book the other day that I haven't read it's like this thick that's like from one of the guys telling the story and so I've gotten stories from him so any information I'm relaying is someone else's information so I never know how well how, you weren't there right you had other things to do right I was busy when they were doing that um, I was a you know in college I you could, but <laughs> but uh, supposedly when and this is not in the, the movie but supposedly when they're killed at the end there was like fifty thousand dollars in the trunk of the car because they were basically hoarding the money they were taking that it just disappeared now whether that was something <laughs> someone said to try to you know go oh, well these cops aren't good as you think they are or if that's or if they did you know the five of them went out there shot them and went oh a trunk full of money you went and then you know, and then back then, no one yeah. knew about it, so I don't know. Well, they didn't have body cameras or anything, so it's like... Right, but it, it, <laughs> I don't think... You really want that, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I went there. <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't think they would probably do it near as nice as the paper was here's, making them out to be. Here's, like, a really weird particular thing that I will be the only person that cares about in the entire <laughs> world. But I really liked how they talked about some of the political issues that were going on in Texas at the time. Uh, they were talking about you know, the governor, why she was the governor, what was going on with her husband, the prison systems, uh, the, 
the Rangers being disbanded, a possible creation of the Texas Highway Patrol. All of that were discussions that were going on at that time, and I thought that was really good to put in there. Here's where I'm torn. Because those were relevant to the story, and because I think that those kinds of issues are important today, would it have been helpful if they accurately portrayed the political parties associated with the different arguments? Because they were mostly just mum on it. No pun intended. You mean they didn't have a, a political association? Yeah, they didn't say people that were, who was Republican, yeah, who I was Democrat. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what the governor was. No. They didn't say. But, but those were, there was a very big political change that was going on during that time. Um, and no, I like the fact that it's not there. I, yeah, I thought it was, it's nice that they have the issues. They, they need the, the issues, issues talked about. I don't need politics. Yeah. Out. It's fine. Um, you know what I would like, though? I watched a documentary on Frank Hammer. And the dude, like, so th basically this, the story starts and they're retired, they're old. Um, he did all kinds of crap, just as equally amazing as this story <laughs> throughout his entire life. Yeah. I want to see that, too. Like, they need to, right. like, we need a prequel. Like, we need a series, like, yeah. the HBO series. Pay attention, guys. Game of Thrones is ending. You got to fill it with something. Frank Hamer. Come on. <laughs> and I would, I would love to see... Which he tells some of the stories, you know, through that. And yeah. apparently those were Most pretty true. close to, yeah. you know, the way it was. Most so it would have been, been interesting to, yeah. to see that portray out. So that was the only thing when the movie was over and I watched this documentary, I was a little sad. I was like, man, because they just, which I know it's a Bonnie and Clyde movie from a different perspective. So they basically start with Bonnie and Clyde. But I would have loved, 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 loved to have seen... Like, you know, he tells you how, how he got into law enforcement, which was a crazy story, which was apparently yeah. pretty accurate. <laughs> some of the names were changed, but you know, and it's just... Going back to your thing, episodic films that are hosted by uh, by Kevin Costner and... Yeah. You know, like, just kind of little things that are about what had happened with the Texas Rangers... What's the the, the, uh, the law enforcement show? Um, it's on HBO or Stars or one of them. It's supposed to be really True Detective. Good. True Detective. Like, I would have loved to have a True Detective style, yeah. like, but just do the life of, you know, start when he he's working on the farm and gets shot. And I mean, wouldn't you love to see the, the story you know, Woody Harrelson would be tells a great at the end? first episode where he's, you know, saving up the money to be a parson or go to Parsons or whatever, and then he's like, guy offers him money and like that whole bit and then end it the way coming back to Game of Thrones the way that first episode ended with that shocker ending it's like yes there will be more <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a fun story well, but wouldn't you love to see, I want to see yes, the story Woody Harrelson told I want I to see that yeah would watch the heck out of that All right. sounds exciting <laughs> no and I, I I think people like it I think people are going to like Highwaymen I kind of it does not fit that ADD, like, yeah. wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, formula. And I don't know if... Uh, That's the kind of movie that made me think rated R movies were great. Yeah, I know. Because it's a great... It's just a great movie. But, Happens to be rated R for the bloody violence. But <laughs> I don't know if, like, a mass audience is going to sit down and go, you know, this is really good because it doesn't have what we're used to, you know. Here's... I would recommend this for people who love westerns. Yes. And yeah. they want to see an in-between western movie that is just post-horseback. Well, if you want westerns or a gangster, mm -hmm. if you like like the gangster mm -hmm. movies, like, I think that fits in. You've got all of it. Yeah. It's like Unforgiven, but not. Yeah. <laughs> I love the line where he's like, how'd they find out about that? Well, they... They have the they wire the taps. The pedal. He was like, "Oh, they can do anything <laughs> nowadays." Or had to radio in the car. Yeah, and yeah. On the radio. I also love. There's a the scene where uh, Kevin Costner goes into the gun store and buys like every gun. Oh in my the store. gosh, that was, He's like, he had yeah, a list at, of. At first, I thought, which is, one is he do just you want? Kind of checking out what oh. what they're using. I'm like, no, he want. Yeah, it's what Bonnie oh. and Clyde had. He wanted it too. Yeah. And then they go. He takes Woody Harrelson out to the woods. <laughs> He's like, hit that sign over, and he's got the revolver, and he can't and he get just, it anymore. He just pulls out, like, was it the Thompson or it, something? It and he was, just he said it was equivalent to be, to a BAR, and I don't know what it was, but it was... Yeah, and he just unloathes on yeah. it. Woody. I was like, you have another one of those? Can I have one? Yeah. It was a great scene. Great scene. Great movie. Great scene. Great actors. Yes. And it's on Netflix. Doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, extra Assuming you have you. Netflix. Yes, we have Netflix. So, yeah. Yeah. Watch it. You make 
taught me wearing my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. you can. I know you don't like to go to the doctors, but sometimes you should go, even when you feel good. They can give you a medical test to find diseases before they get really bad. And don't worry, I'll go with you, in case they find something wrong and you need me to ask questions. Do we have a deal? I want you around for a long time. Health tips for the whole family from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Help yourself quit smoking. Yesquit.org, a free service that can double your chances of quitting for good. 